everybody welcome back to the channel in this video you're checking out a brand new magicka nightblade build for the graymore chapter and not just that but this is a vampire build for the nightblade class combining the brand new and reworked vampire skills from the graymore chapter with the magicka nightblade class skills for some pretty strong build synergy we're using the new vampire spammable which costs health and then recovering our health with the classic magicka nightblade heal over time kit as always, we'll go over the stats, we'll go over the different gear options, skills, champion points, I'll talk about the outfit style, and we'll talk about a basic rotation as well. All that and more is coming up next. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Nightblade for the Greymore chapter, this time with a melee vampire build for the Magicka Nightblade class. Now, the way I've set this up is primarily as a solo build, but we'll talk about some possibilities in terms of group dps maybe even pvp so the setup is pretty flexible but let's go ahead and start with the buff stats and just jump right into it sitting on about 42k max magicka 23k max health almost 16k max stamina about a thousand magicka recovery 300 health recovery 600 stamina recovery spell damage coming in at 228 but with our vampire buff closer to 3000 and then we also have a spell damage enchant on the back bar, so about 3,500. And we'll talk about how you can get your spell damage over 4K, well over 4K with the vamp setup. 72% spell critical. Let me go ahead and buff my defensives here and heal up. In terms of your defenses, sitting about 19K spell resistance, 18K physical resistance. That's with our shadow buffed proc. In terms of your attribute points, a little bit unique here on the vampire build. I've split my attributes between Magicka. 32 points Magicka, 32 points into health. And you can see my health pool is a little bit higher. And that's going to be because we are using health as our main spammable. So of costing Magicka, that's going to cost health. So we do want a little bit higher health pool just to make sure we don't kill ourselves. So we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Stage 1 Vampire. I have been experimenting with the new stages. I feel like the other stages, the later stages, are a little bit too costly for this build in terms of what you get on the plus side so i am just at the basic stage one right now shadow mundus to increase our crit damage we do have over 70 percent crit so that is helpful running the purple tri stat food you can also run the gold bewitch sugar skulls if you want for even more max stats even more health recovery in terms of the potion you do want the spell power potion that's going to give you that uh, max spell damage as well as crit bonus and then in terms of the race uh, for the Nightblade, I kind of feel like Breton is the best way to go if you're going to be a vampire, just because of the extra sustain. That's down here, Magicka Mastery. You get a 7% cost reduction of all your Magicka abilities. Uh, and if you're familiar with the new vampire skills, those actually increase your cost by about 5%. So this does help offset it. So that is nice to run a Breton. You also get the 2000 max Magicka, get the extra spell resistance, extra... Uh, magicka recovery uh, but basically we're running it for the magicka mastery passive now you can make it work on a high elf you just might need to change your glyphs up slightly dark elf khajiit those are some other good options as well but i think that covers the basics so we can jump into the gear sets next starting off with our first five piece set it's going to be mother sorrow this just gives us a good combination of max magicka and a lot a lot of spell critical We'll talk about the passives later, but Nightblades already get a bonus 10% crit damage uh, within their passives. So maximizing your spell critical is really going to help you out a lot. This also means that your healing can crit, or basically you'll get higher heals on your Nightblade, which is really going to be helpful for the vampire playstyle. So I do recommend this set. Uh, it is from the zone of Dishan, so it's uh, you can purchase it on Guild Traders, you can farm it yourself, and it's not too difficult to get. I am using double Inferno Staff, so front bar Inferno Staff, back bar Inferno Staff. In terms of the traits, precise on the front bar, just to help with that spell critical. And then infused on the back bar with a spell damage enchant, we talked about that. That'll give you over 500 extra spell damage every five seconds. Front bar enchant is kind of up to you. I do like the Absorb Magicka enchant there, just for a little bit extra sustain. That is nice, especially since we are running a vamp. And then the jewelry, nothing fancy right now. I'm just running three arcane, three spell damage. Uh, if you're thinking about maybe putting this into a group DPS situation, you can think about possibly running a couple of bloodthirsty, maybe two bloodthirsty traits here, as well as maybe one infused with a cost reduction. 
Uh, that'll help a lot with sustain. But you can also just make it work with basic spell damage and max magicka as your jewelry traits. So we've got three Mother Sorrow there, and then remember the weapons count for two, so that's giving us our first five-piece set. For the second five-piece set, I went with Crafty Alfiq. Uh, this is just a great max magicka set. You can see the bonuses here. Everything max magicka. That's what's helping us getting well over 40k total magicka on the build. And max magicka helps a lot in terms of the vampire spammable, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, that does scale up with max magicka and spell damage. So basically we're doing as much damage as possible with a non-trial setup. You can substitute trials gear in this place if you want. Uh, but if you just want an easy solo build, then Crafty Alfiq, this can also be farmed uh, by yourself or it can be bought from guild traders. It's from the Elsewhere chapter, so you will need access to that if you want to farm it. But another great all-around damage set and pretty easy to get. So I'm wearing this five pieces on the body, so the light chest, light waist, light hands, light legs, and light feet, all in divines if you can get it. That's going to maximize that spell crit damage from our Mundus Stone. Max Magicka enchants on everything. Finally, for the Monster Helm, you do have some options here. For the solo play style, maybe even for VMA, I do like Ice Heart still. Even though this did see a nerf last patch, you can still get it over 6k thanks to your champion points. It does uh, proc off your crit damage. Uh, so since we have such high crit chance, this is going to proc basically off cooldown which is really nice to help you stay alive in some tougher content. If you're not concerned about that, then you can definitely run a damage-based monster set. Something like Zahn is going to be very good for increasing your overall DPS. Uh, you can even run the new Narayaneth. This is getting buffed in the Greymore chapter as well. I've been looking at this. It does pretty good damage. It now adds 128 spell damage on the one piece instead of, I believe it was health before. And then it's doing a pretty good uh, magic-based proc there every three seconds. So that is a nice option too. But for uh, solo content where you want a little bit more survivability, definitely check out Ice Heart. Now your best in slot weights here are going to be Heavy Helmet, Medium Shoulder. That's if you have Undaunted maxed out because you get the 6% bonus resources from having three different armor types, Heavy, Light, and Medium. I just went with the basic in enchantments here, Health on the Head. Uh, and stamina on the shoulders is totally fine. Divines on the trait if you can get it. That covers the gear. Now let's get into the skills where things get a little bit more interesting. Starting on our front bar. Now I have Reaper's Mark here currently, and this is going to be very good for things like VMA, uh, or even if you're just in Overland content, because this does give you Major Breach, as well as a big burst heal when an enemy dies, and you gain Major Berserk. What that does is it increases your damage done by 25% for 5 seconds. So this is really great for a vampire build, you guys, because you get the huge burst heal when the target dies, and then it's increasing your damage for the next 5 seconds. So this is really good, just basically bouncing from target to target. Now that is from the assassination skill line. Uh, that's the second to last ability that we get. Reaper's Mark is the morph that we want. Now the only case I would say where this is not really going to be an advantage is on a boss fight, right? Especially on a single target boss fight. If you don't have any adds to kill, you're not going to get the heal. You're not going to get the major berserk to proc. So in that case, uh, especially for like a solo boss or something, just slot elemental drain. Elemental drain gives you the same debuff, that major breach. Uh, this is free to cast though, and it gives you minor magicka steal, increasing your magicka sustain. That is from the Destruction Staff skill line. Second to last ability there, and we want Elemental Drain as the morph. So those are my two options there in terms of that debuff. Next up, we got another flex spot. Currently running Inner Light as the second ability. This just gives us a lot of passive Magicka. Uh, max Magicka increased by 5%, actually 7% with the Mage's Guild passives. And we do get Spell Critical passively on the front bar, so you can switch up your potion a little bit if you want while running this. So this is just going to give you the most damage possible. Now the other thing I do like uh, in this spot is sometimes I will run Lotus Fan instead. Lotus Fan is also from the Assassination skill line. That's the second skill we have here. And this is our Gap Closer. Remember, this is a melee-based Magicka Nightblade build. So this is really nice, again, for things like VMA, where you need to cover distance really quickly to get yourself into melee range. It also hits the enemy with minor vulnerability, meaning they take 8% bonus damage for the next six seconds. So that's really nice, again, just for the bonus damage 
and the movement. Third ability I'm going to recommend is going to be Impale. This is also from the Assassination skill line. That's a Nightblade Execute ability. So you do 300% bonus damage when the target is below 25% health. Again, this is going to be really nice, especially for those bosses. Once they get in Execute range, you're going to switch from your main spammable to this skill just to maximize your damage. You can cast this from range as well, so keep that in mind. Fourth ability, this is gonna be our spammable, our vampire spammable from the new Greymore chapter. This is called Blood for Blood. So in the vampire skill line, this is the new first ability that you get. And the Blood for Blood morph is really interesting because instead of costing Magicka like the base morph does, this actually costs health, about 2,000 health, though that can go down based on your vampire stage. And this has some really nice benefits. It actually does very decent damage for a spammable. This is comparable to any melee-based spammable in the game, basically. It even hits slightly harder than Concealed Weapon. You can see Concealed Weapon hits for 8,800. This is hitting for 9,100. Now, the other nice thing is obviously this costs health instead of Magicka. So in terms of sustaining like a single target rotation on the Magicka Nightblade with this, it's almost free to cast. Think about all the healing over time potential that a Nightblade has. This spammable is basically free because you're going to be getting that 2k health back per second easily. Uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to our other abilities. It also does bonus damage based on your missing health, so it can hit for more. And when this crits, it does really, really good damage. So that is our spammable. Again, check out the Blood for Blood morph. Uh, I think the health cost is interesting and it makes the sustain on this build super easy. And speaking of getting that health back, we need something to bring that health into the build, right? So for that, we're going to run Swallow Soul on the front bar. This is from the Siphoning skill line. That's the first ability that you get there. And this is basically the ranged class spammable for Magicka Nightblade, right? But on this build, we're actually not using it as a spammable. We're using it as a heal over time. You can see it does basically less damage than Blood for Blood. Uh, it does cost a fair bit of Magicka, but it's giving us a heal every two seconds for 10 seconds. So instead of, you know, using this as a spammable ability, weaving this in with light attacks, I'm just going to use it once every 10 seconds to proc that heal over time. And that heal over time is really strong. Uh, if you crit this combined with some of your other buffs, the heal that you can get back is almost 6k, 7k. Uh, healing every two seconds. I've even gotten as high as 9,000 health back every two seconds from this ability. So this is more than enough to keep our, our health sustained while we're using our spammable, which is costing us health. So this is a great option for the Magicka Nightblade. And that's why I think Magicka Nightblade works really well with the new reworked vampire skills. So definitely check out that. And then finally, for the ultimate, we're going to use Soul Harvest. Uh, this is from Assassination. That's the ultimate here. It makes all our abilities hit 20% harder for six seconds. Uh, and it also gives us ultimate, 10 ultimate on any kill. So this is very nice for farming ultimate. Now the trick too, I mentioned how you can get your Swallow Soul to do more healing is anytime you cast Soul Harvest, you want to make sure you get a Swallow Soul off within that six second window. Because if this hits for 20% more damage, that means essentially you have extra healing uh, on your heal over time from Swallow Soul, right? So make sure you don't forget to cast that after a Soul Harvest at some point. All right, back bar next, our double Destro Staff. We're going to do another vampire ability here. This time, this is our buff, our weapon and spell damage buff. This is called Sated Fury. This is the second ability you get from Vampire, and this also costs health. It gives you 660 weapon and spell damage currently while you have this toggle effect on. So it is a toggle. Works like this, you just turn it on. And you can see while that's going, my health is being drained, about 1700 health per second. Now again, we're gonna be able to counteract that with our heal over time from Swallow Soul. So don't worry about that. And if you get too low, it actually acts as kind of a burst heal. Once I turn that toggle off, you can see 20K health back instantly from that. Uh, so this is almost like a Magicka version of Rally. If you want to think of it that way, the longer you have this buff active, the bigger heal you can get from it. That's why I like this morph, especially for soloing. When you toggle the ability off, you can see you heal for 36% of the total health cost you spent. So if you have this up for, you know, 10 seconds at least, 
you're going to get a sizable heal from that, which is really nice. Now, keep in mind, you cannot be healed by anyone else while you have this buff active. So if you're in a group, maybe let the healer know their heals are not going to help you out uh, in this case. But again, as a Magicka Nightblade, I think you have plenty of heal over time to really make this work. Now, this is the morph I prefer, again, for the burst heal, but you can do the other morph here, which can effectively double the uh, spell damage you get. So over 1,200 spell damage, but that's going to also increase the health cost, over 3k health cost, which can be a little bit tricky, um, especially if you're soloing or trying to do VMA because your health is going to ping pong around a little bit. Uh, but if you're in a comfortable position, maybe you are in a group with a tank or something, that's pulling damage from you, definitely check out the other morph as well uh, to maximize your damage. Next up, we got Blockade of Fire. This is from the Destruction Staff skill line. Second ability there. And really, we're just using this to proc our enchant. We have the weapon and spell damage enchant on the back bar that's giving us close to 600 spell damage every five seconds uh, when we have that ability on the ground and it's hitting an enemy. So that's why that ability is there. Next up is a flex spot. Currently, I have Twisting Path slotted here. Uh, and this is going to be great for damage for group DPS. This comes from the Shadow skill line. So that's the third ability that you get. And Twisting Path is the damage morph. Now you also get some nice passives from this, which we'll talk about in a minute. But basically, this is how you proc your armor buff on a Nightblade. So you want to make sure you recast this a little bit early, actually, maybe about 10 seconds uh, if you're soloing just to keep that buff up. Now, another nice option here, if you're struggling, if you feel like you're taking too much damage, well, I would recommend instead of Twisting Path is put on Dark Shade uh, in this position. So what Dark Shade does is it summons a pet for you. This is the last ability in the Shadow skill line. When the pet attacks a target, it does an AoE Minor Maim. Now, if you don't know what that means, it basically reduces your enemy's damage, the damage they do to you, by 15%. So obviously that means you're going to be taking a lot less damage when your target is debuffed with that effect. So this is very nice too. For things like world bosses, I will definitely slot Dark Shade instead of Twisting Path, just to have that extra debuff on an enemy. It's it's really strong, you guys. Definitely check that out. Now last, we just, we just have our two buffs here. So Siphoning Attacks, this is from the Siphoning skill line. This gives us Magicka and Health back for doing light or heavy attacks. So this is gonna be really nice as well. You wanna try to light weave as much as possible. That means when you're on your uh, front bar, when you're spamming your blood for blood, make sure you hit the enemy with a light attack in between each swipe. That's almost going to heal you back. You can see this costs 2,000 health, but siphoning attacks restores about 1,600 health. So that's going to be very helpful as well. And then when the effect runs out, after 20 seconds, we get a big burst of Magicka back, which is great for our sustain. Uh, like I said, that's from siphoning. That's the second to last ability that you get. And siphoning is the Magicka morph, so make sure you pick that one. And finally, Merciless Resolve is from the Assassination skill line. Uh, this is an interesting skill. You can basically stack this up to five light or heavy attacks. Each stack gives you 2% damage reduction, so up to 10% less damage that you're taking on your character. Or when you get to those five stacks, you can also use the Assassin's Will bow proc, dealing big, big damage, especially if that happens to be a crit. And it also gets you a burst heal. So that's going to be very nice for the vampire play style as well. Uh, you can use that as a burst heal. You have Sated Fury uh, as a burst heal. And you also have all that healing over time from Swallow Soul. So the heals on this build looks kind of scary at first because you don't have anything, you know, that looks like a burst heal. You're not running a resto staff, but you do have plenty of opportunities for heals. So keep that in mind. And then for the back bar ultimate, you really can slot anything you want here. You can use the Destruction Staff ultimate, which is what I have right now for VMA. You can also slot another nice option is from the siphoning skill line, Soul Shred. I would morph that to Soul Tether. That's a great AoE stun and heal. Of course, since we are a vampire, you can obviously run the new vampire ultimate uh, on that back bar. What I would recommend if you want to do a vamp ultimate is the Swarming Scion morph. This morph is pretty cool. It gives you 10,000 health, magicka, and stamina. It also heals you back to full when you pop it. So it's a nice little mini burst heal. And you also do magic damage with the Bat Swarm, and you get healed when you do damage as well. So that's another nice option you can put there uh, on the back bar. All right, while we're here, let's talk about passives. What passives do you want and what passives do you need as a Vampire Nightblade? Well, the Feed passive tells you about the stages. We talked about this earlier. 
You have now stages one, two, three, and four. As you move up the stages, your health recovery drops, your flame damage taken increases, your regular ability costs increase, and your vampire costs decrease. So I think somewhere between stage one and two, uh, either one of those is the, the sweet spot for this build currently, but you can play around with different stages all the way up to level four if you want. Darkstalker passive, it's not really necessary for this build, more of like an RP flavor passive. It decreases the time it takes to enter sneak. Uh, so that's fine. Strike from the shadows, same thing. You can get some bonus spell damage uh, when you leave invisibility or misform. Blood Ritual, this is how you do the uh, Vampire Bite to share that with another player. Undeath, we're actually not going to make use of on this build because it does require stage 3 or higher. But if you are at that level, if you are at that stage of Vampire, uh, then you can get 30% less damage based on your missing health. Unnatural Movement, this is that new passive that gives you invisibility after sprinting. This is pretty cool just for avoiding enemies in Overland. Uh, so if you want to pick this up, definitely check it out. It's fun to play around with for sure. It also reduces the cost of sprint by 50%. It's actually a pretty massive uh, bonus there in terms of sprinting on a build. So pick those up if you want them. Of course, this all is subject to change uh, on the Greymore PTS. In terms of the Nightblade class passives, most of these are good. I mean, Master Assassin, since we're not really using Invisible or Sneak, you could probably save two points here. The Executioner is very good. You do get some extra Magicka sustain from this. Pressure points, you get bonus spell, crit. And then Hemorrhage, this is what we talked about with the Nightblade. Focusing on crit is always smart uh, on the Nightblade build, Stamina or Magicka, because you do get bonus 10% crit damage. Then Under Shadow, Refreshing Shadows, just gives us really good recoveries on the build. Shadow Barrier, we talked about this. This is your armor buff that only procs off shadow abilities. So that's going to be that back bar. Either you're running Shade or you're running Twisting Path to proc that effect. Dark Figure, a little bit extra max health on the back bar. Not a huge deal, uh, but then Dark Veil is good for extending the duration, again, either of that Shade or of Twisting Path, so make sure you get that one as well. Under Siphoning, these are actually very good on the spilled Catalyst. When you drink a potion, you get 20 ultimate, so getting that front bar ultimate up even quicker. Magic of Flood, this is amazing, you guys. This is, makes it so easy to stack Max Magicka on the Magblade builds. Uh, Max Magicka increased by 8% while a Siphoning ability is slotted. So make sure you have this on both bars. I have my Siphoning attacks on the back bar. And of course, we have Swallow Soul on the front bar. So that's going to help us get that 8% no matter what. Soul Siphoner, a little bit of increased healing done. And then Transfer, this is good as well. You can get some extra ultimates. Uh, when you cast those abilities. Of course, Destruction Staff, you'll want to pick up all of these. Very good passives there. Light Armor, pick up all of those. Vampire, we already talked about. In terms of your guild skills, Fighter's Guild is nice. For the Banish the Wicked passive, this gives you some extra ultimate, which can be helpful depending on your target. Now, Mage's Guild, definitely pick these up if you're running Inner Light. Now, you don't always have enough bar slots to run Inner Light, so you may want to just conserve your points uh, for these, but you can pick up some bonus Magicka and Magicka Recovery if you have those abilities. Sigic Quarter, I'm actually not using any of these currently. You do want Undaunted Metal, at least if you are max out on your Undaunted level 10, because you do get 2% of stats per type of armor equipped, up to 6%. Assault and Support, totally don't need these, no PvP ne needed on this build. And then you do, of course, want your Race uh, passives and alchemy medicinal use level three to make those potions last as long as possible champion points quickly let's check it out again this is what i'm recommending currently for solo you can adjust these for group dps uh, as needed 34 into warlord 18 into sprinter 32 into healthy 75 arcanist 49 into mooncalf 31 shadow ward 31 tumbling in the blue tree 19 into Blessed, 56 Elfborn, 56 Elemental Expert, 47 into Spell Erosion, 72 Master at Arms, 20 into Thaumaturge, in the Red Tree, 66 Ironclad, 36 Light Armor Focused, 26 into Thick Skinned, 43 into Elemental, Defender, and Hardy, and then 56 into Bastion. That's only for Ice Heart if you're running a Damage Shield set or the Mother Sionet set, either way. Uh, you'll get a nice bonus increase on your uh, automatic damage shield there 
for that CP node. Uh, in terms of the outfit style, if you're interested, this is basically Grim Harlequin uh, across the entire uh, body. So Grim Harlequin jerkin, we have the gloves, the feet, shoulders. I think the only thing that's different is the legs. The legs in this case were the, were the light uh, Moongrave Fane style. All right, so let's show a quick rotation just so I can show how the spammable works, how you keep your health up. Basically, just make sure your buffs are up on the back bar. We've got Siphoning Attacks, we've got Merciless, Sated Fury, Pop a Potion, and then make sure your pet is active to debuff the damage if you're soloing. And then if you have an ultimate up, slap the boss with that ultimate right into your Swallow Soul. That's going to make sure that those ticks are hitting as hard as possible. You can see I'm getting over 9k healing per second from Swallow Soul. Then I can do about six or seven of my spammables, Swallow Soul again, and then swap to my back bar. Refresh my buffs here. If you have a uh, bow proc, you can go ahead and use that. Now, obviously, if you're solo, you're going to want to keep up Ellie Drain on the boss just to help with your sustain and your, your uh, debuff there. So again, I'm going to Swallow Soul before I bar swap. Wall, pet, reactivate my buffs, keep my potion up. Your ultimate is up, ultimate, swallow soul, and then again, do about six or seven uh, blood for bloods. You can see the sustain. I'm barely losing any magicka at this point because the sustain is crazy. Crazy good. Okay, we're in execute range, so make sure you have a swallow soul active and then you can just spam impale. And that's how you do it. Of course, when you're done, don't forget to turn off uh, Fury. You cannot kill yourself with Fury. Uh, it will run off by itself, but if you have other targets, you know, and your health gets too low, that might be a problem. Uh, let's see how much burst heal I get here off of this. 64,000. Not too shabby. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up the Blood Frenzy build for the Greymore chapter. Hope you all enjoyed this one. Of course, if you did, don't forget to crush that like button. It really does help out the channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe for more build videos just like this and turn those notifications on so you don't miss anything. If you'd like to support the channel further, there's links below to my social media. You can also check out that join button for more information on becoming a channel member. Until then, thanks again for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Stay safe and I will see you around in the next video.